For centuries, humanity has sought to protect itself from those who would do evil. Those who would deny the law. But now a new breed of criminal has been born. One that threatens the very fabric of our global community. These ruthless criminals are everywhere, lurking in the shadows. They are corrupting our children, and they seek to channel our hard-earned profits directly to gangsters and terrorists. The lives of entertainment executives all over the world are being ruined. We must act before it's too late. Recording yourself performing copyrighted songs is illegal. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday is a copyright protected song. There is no justification for the introduction of a consumer right to format shift. Transferring music from a CD to an MP3 player can be against the law. It is illegal to insert and edit copyrighted audiovisual material for use in educational projects. Ignorance of the law is not a defense. Coming to a country near you, new restrictive copyright laws you won't believe. Aforementioned copyright restrictions based on real legal examples. Terms and conditions will apply. Access to knowledge will be denied. Your rights as a consumer are at serious risk. You have been warned. In many ways, copyright has actually been expanding without anyone paying adequate attention to it. Today, copyright law intrudes deeply into our everyday lives. When we decide we want to record our favorite television show, now suddenly copyright arises. When we want to uh, copy and paste a clip from a movie or from a piece of music or from a book to send to our friends an email, suddenly copyright is involved. In fact, even when we want to simply listen to a piece of music, something that previously you drop a needle on a record, there was no copyright event because there was no copying. Of course, today, when you press the button to download a song from iTunes and then move it to your portable music player, well, now copyright is involved from start to finish because of the act of copying. Copyright matters an awful lot has an impact on your education, on your entertainment, on your creativity, your ability to speak out. Indeed, I think many people, if they stop to think about it, increasingly recognize that copyright affects them literally every day, and it affects them in a multitude of ways. Uh, and the direction that we've seen over the last number of years, I think, really troubles a great many people. It has a real direct impact on consumers, and that's why we see so many people speaking out. Big media are seeking to lock us all down so that they can control access and they get to control us. They're going to turn every interaction we have with a copyrighted work into a transaction. Hi, you might remember us. We actually bought your music. We, we buy your albums. I bought it from a legitimate distributor and I installed it. I put it in my computer. My buttons do not work. You turn them off. Copyright infringement? Deleting people's videos? Copyright infringement! Just because I talk negatively about WrestleMania 25. You know what I hate? Copyright. Nobody should have a video taken down or changed because of a copyright claim that is unfounded. Underlying copyright is a public purpose. And the public purpose is to create new works that the public can have access to. It is not the goal of copyright to maximize every penny that a movie studio or a record label could possibly you know, squeeze from the consumer. That has never been the goal. The goal is to ensure an adequate return so that those creators can do the work that we all enjoy so very much, um, while at the same time fostering access. Uh, and so this balance is the key uh, to a well-functioning copyright system, and quite frankly, is the thing that we've been losing sight of. This is 
net piracy, pure and simple. It is widespread, and it is bringing the music industry to its knees. The film and TV business are also under a growing threat. This will make you think before you download illegal music. A jury has ordered a staggering amount of money to be paid by someone who downloaded and shared music. I don't have $675,000 or any appreciable fraction of that. A federal jury ordered the woman to pay $80,000 for each of the 24 songs that were posted on Kazaa so others could download them. I still haven't been able to wrap my head around the fact that it was almost $2 million. Ideally, the discussion over copyright should be held between those who consume creative content and those who produce creative content, that is the artists, filmmakers, etc. Unfortunately, the artists and filmmakers transfer their rights to large corporations, and large corporations have no other interests except to monetize their investments, and uh, their drive for profits have taken them into policy-making space. We are making great progress around the world. In New Zealand, there's new legislation. In Australia, I'm talking to the government. In Japan, there's an industry initiative. Um, in Belgium, a judge said to the internet service providers, I don't care how you stop this, but you must stop it. And in France, we have a wonderful champion in President Sarkozy. Parts of the industry are saying any sort of copyright infringement is piracy. And piracy is something that happens by lots of criminals. And these criminals are... Uh, essentially using content to make profits which are going to drugs or going to terrorism. And they're therefore trying to equate people using bit torrents with terrorists. The pirates are out to get you. Don't let them brand you with their mark. Piracy funds organised crime and will destroy our film and video industry. Piracy funds terrorism and will destroy our music and publishing industry. The industry uses a blanket term like piracy to describe all sorts of behavior. Organized piracy happening at a commercial scale, individual uh, users at home sharing files amongst themselves, sometimes even fair use according to the law they will characterize as piracy. The reason why industry is demonizing copyright infringement is because they're hoping to precipitate a knee-jerk policy response. If you conflate copyright infringement with child pornography, terrorism, organized crime, etc., then policymakers will respond almost immediately. The biggest problem that I'm seeing is the fear that's being generated by the lobbying groups. Uh, very much like, you know, you're against copyright and you're for copyright, you're like a pirate or you're, you're okay, which has nothing to do with reality whatsoever. Right? It's not that we're against copyright, you know. We just want a better model. I don't even, you know, understand why the consumers are even under attack when the consumers are the ones that are financing their whole situation in the first place. Because it, it, it's the consumers and, and their appreciation and their love for, 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 for music and the art is, is, is what's driving this entire business. Anything that puts the wall between the producer and the consumer, to me, you're stifling that entire process. You can go back to the days of the cassettes. People said the only reason why you're buying the cassettes so that you could copy songs or records that were already recorded and distribute those to your friends. Technology supported by legal rules that lock down content in particular kinds of formats that within a year or two or ten suddenly become outdated, run the risk of literally locking out people from its own history and culture. When I love a particular work, whether it be film or music, there's a great deal that arises from my ability to share that with other people who connect to those same works, or perhaps share it with people who disagree with me. Um, the trouble arises when copyright law makes that urge to share, which is absolutely natural and creates our shared culture, turns that in, into an unlawful act. Certainly in the United States, over 35,000 Americans were targeted for lawsuits for downloading music. Um, I think everyone 
10 years from now, we'll look back at that as an incredibly ridiculous, absurd, and unjust uh, way to go about it. No one thinks that suing music fans one at a time is the business model of the future. Black on the track, it don't smell too old. What's going on? I don't know. It's trouble. We have to now start thinking about the community as opposed to us thinking selfishly. That's the growing pain that we're having. You know, you're looking at corporations who are thinking very selfishly, and they're not thinking on, on what, what's good for the entire community. Because if you look on what's good for the entire community, then you'll find out that what works for the community also works for yourself. It's all about, you know, getting the consumer involved in the, in the process of, of dealing of the business of the business cycle. And I think that that, that dialogue is, is necessary and healthy for us to create the cycle that we need to, to create better and, and, and more interesting things. One important area of new digital creativity is what's known as remix or mashup. In fact, some have gone so far as to call it remix culture. The rise of consumers, fans, citizens, actually taking pieces from existing works, films, television, music, and splicing them together, cutting them up, re-editing them, in essence, in order to make a point, in order to send a new message, in order to create, in essence, a new work. Um, this is incredibly popular. The tools have become very cheap, and more and more uh, individuals are getting involved with it. Sites like YouTube and Dailymotion are filled with these kinds of new forms of video creativity. These are all the kinds of creativity that I think do not threaten copyright owners in the least. Right? This is not a substitute. Those who engage in this creativity and those who watch these videos are people who love the shows. They are the most likely to buy those DVDs, to pay to see the movie. This additional way to express their views actually engages them even more. And so this is an area where uh, copyright law is increasingly out of step with, I think, the practices of the 21st century. When we think about where we're headed in the future, I think the issue, frankly, is whether or not we get that more flexible enabling copyright today or in two years or we spend 20 years fighting about it. Eventually, we get there. Um, the demographics say it, the technology says it, the user experiences say it, frankly, the business people are going to be saying it too. Um, the countries that recognize that and try to come up with forward-looking approaches today are going to be winners and those that spend the next 10 or 20 years fighting over these issues only to realize that they got it all wrong are going to find themselves behind.